Hi there. Today I wanted to have a chat about stress, trauma and the vagus nerve. When we look at what stress is, it's nothing more than our system mobilising energy to cope with a threat or a challenge. And in some cases, stress is actually good for us. It helps us perform optimally. So let's just say you have a presentation to give and you wanted to have enough focus to do a really good job, it would be stress that mobilised your system to get ready for this. So if we have a look at picture one, this would be low stress, high stress. This is performance. So the optimal place is somewhere in between. Too little stress and we're flat, we're fatigued, we're not going to think as clearly and as focused as we could. And too much stress, on the other hand, is not going to give us our best performance because we're not going to be able to really think clearly. What happens with stress normally is that we have an increase, so if you have a look down here at picture two, we have an increase in what we call allostasis or load, and then we have a phase of recovery from that. And we stay around this set point here or within our what we call window of tolerance. So ideally, we would go up and down of periods of mobilization of our system and then periods of recovery all the while coming back to this ideal set point. Now, with stress and trauma, they're actually on a, the same continuum. So not all stress leads to trauma. Trauma happens when we go through a period of things being challenging and we feel powerless and hopeless and it's too much for our system. Chronically, when we have too much stress, the load increases and let's say we don't get to have the full recovery from this and there's still activation of our system, with chronic stress will continue to come up and build until our new set point is up here. At this set point, we have a greater, what we call allostatic load. And it's that allostatic load that sets the stage for dysregulation of our nervous system, immune system, endocrine system. And they all have an effect on us. So with our autonomic nervous system, too much stress, too much anxiety, worry, insomnia, gut issues, or we feel flat, fatigued, and we can't get motivated, so more to that depressed side. The effect that this has on our immune system is that we mobilize inflammatory cytokines, and this can lead to things like chronic pain, it can lead to autoimmune issues and allergies. And all of this is long-term, how we end up with chronic illness. So if you suffer from dysregulation, some of the important things to remember is number one, allow time for rest and recovery. So if you tend to put a lot of pressure on yourself, now is the time to let that go down. We know that some of the unhealthy coping mechanisms that can come from dysregulation are overworking and overdoing. And if that tends to be you, that accumulation of load will continue to build dysregulation and that will create a cycle where you attempt to feel better through overworking and overdoing. Number two, what we know is that stress resilience is more important than stress reduction. So we want to build the resilience of our nervous system by expanding our window of tolerance. This is here. So the more we can build tolerance to stress, this doesn't mean that we push it down or we become stoic. This means that we learn how to relate to stress wisely and use tools and practices that help us to stay regulated when emotions and sensations are strong. And one of the most powerful ways we can do that is through the vagus nerve. That's what helps our system to come back down when we've gone through a stress response. And if you'd like to learn more about that, I'll be teaching this in the Vegas Nerve Program starting on Monday, April 13th. And if you'd like to be a part of it, I'd love to have you join him. You can find the details through the links below. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.